Hello, everyone, and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is leading us in worship today, we are so glad that you are joining with us on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. I want to encourage you to use our contact form. It is pinned right in our comment section. And if this is your first time joining with us for Douglas in Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church Online Worship, we really want to make sure that you use that contact form, that we can welcome you and connect with you. Uh, please make sure to put your email address there. And then remember that in that contact form, there is a place there for your prayer requests that goes straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form today. When we gather for online, online worship, we do covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to wholeheartedly join in in what we're doing in worship today. So when it's time to sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. When it's time to pray, please join us in praying. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to get in close to your screen, maybe light a candle if that will help you to focus in on worship, and just really participate in what we're doing together. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means and that in all the ways that we are gathered, in the way that we use our comment section, in the way that we are gathered with people in person, wherever we are, with everyone who's online and with our community, that all of it is a huge blessing to everyone that's participating. That's our covenant to participation and blessing. And now as we continue in worship, I invite you to center yourself with this special time of music. Welcome to worship. I'm Joe Johnson. And I'm Rebecca Johnson, and we're co-chairs of the Missions Committee here at DAUMC. Please receive this call to worship. Come, love divine, and dwell in our hearts. Breathe, O oh, breathe, your loving spirit in us. Come, joy of heaven, and finish your new creation in us. Help us to always bless and serve to praise you without ceasing. To, to glory, glory in, in thy perfect, perfect love. love. Please join us in singing, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Jesus, the Lord. 
my name is Malia Schmidt and I am a member at the Douglas Ave United Methodist Church. I'm also the inventory specialist for Wouldn't It Be Lovely. I'm going to read the prayer with you today. Can you please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer? Gracious and glorious God, we come to this time of worship with questions on our hearts and in our lives. We hope to find help, we seek answers, and we even long for healing. But we are also hardened with doubts about ourselves and others and even you. Grant us healing and openness to your spirit that we may be powerful servants of you and your way in the world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Receive this assurance. New life is given to you through Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can trust God's love for you today and every day. Amen. I invite you now to share the peace and love of Jesus Christ with one another. You can do that using the comment section. You can say, peace be with you and respond and also with you. I encourage you to do that with whoever you may be joined with in worship today. You can share the peace of Christ with me. And we're gonna be led in this by some folks of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. We're Bill and Nancy Gillespie, and we're longtime members of DAUMC. We're members of the Church Choir, and we're also members of the uh, Zebra Sunday School class. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Denise Platt. Say your name. Say major. Major. Peace be with you. We <laughs> And also with you. My name is Patty Ingram, and I am a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. I'm so excited. It's time for small talk. I'd like to invite all the children who are joining with us in online worship to come in really close to your devices and screen so that you can see everything and hear everything that goes on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. Come in really close so you can see and hear everything with small talk. Hello, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud and his assistant, Mr. Cohen. Some technical difficulties. Laud is here today to talk to you about Memorial Day weekend. And that's interesting because that's really, that's something that you're really wearing there, Laud, your head gear. And so Laud is going to explain to us what he thinks about Memorial Day. No, that's not Memorial Day weekend either. Mm -mm, no, no, this, this, no, no. First of all, it's not even hot out today. Not Memorial Day weekend. Mm -mm, no, no. And this, this is not what Memorial Day weekend is about. You're kind of 4th of July, sure. Memorial Day weekend. This, you wanna hold that? This is what Memorial Day weekend is actually about. It is about celebrating people who gave their lives for our freedom and the sacrifices that they made. You dropped it, Lon. For this, for our freedoms, we get to go where we wanna to go to. We get to, we get to practice whatever religion we choose to practice. They made ultimate sacrifices for us. Somebody else that made the ultimate sacrifice for all of us was Jesus. So in the middle of all of the barbecues and all of the fun and the pool parties, this is what we need to remember over Memorial Day weekend. Those who've given their life for all of us. Have an enjoyable Memorial Day weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Scott Smith, and I am a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and a member of the Chancel Choir. Today's reading from the Bible is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. 
Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. It is my honor to welcome our special guest preacher for online worship today, the Reverend Dr. Curtis Brown. Curtis is the Director of Connectional Ministries for the Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church. He uh, worships with us all the time at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. He leads our youth group and uh, helps with our online worship as well. And he is also my husband. I am so excited that we uh, get to share in this ministry together. And we are just so pleased that Curtis is bringing our message today. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Curtis Brown, and it's my privilege and honor to be with you here today. As the youth group will tell you, I am a huge nerd, especially when it comes to things around history or science. And whenever I get to start talking about Methodist history in particular, they all kind of zone out and they have to say, come on back to reality, Curtis. You're the only one who's interested in this, but I've got a Methodist fact that I want us to talk about today. So one of the most important people in the history of Methodism, which is the denomination that this church is a part of, is a guy by the name of John Wesley. He was one of our founders. And he had a very important experience that happened to him about 283 years ago. On May 24th, 1738, John Wesley got invited to a meeting that he didn't want to go to. He said he went reluctantly to a small group gathering where they were doing some Bible study together in London at a house on Aldersgate Street. Now, we're not really sure where this house is exactly because all of that area has been demolished and rebuilt several times, but at Aldersgate Street was just a little residential street. So we got invited to a friend's house. And they were sitting there together, and the person who was leading the group 
was trying to help people explore their faith and connection with God. And he was reading from Martin Luther's preface that he had written to Paul's a letter to the Romans. Now, I've read this preface. It's kind of a boring document, but something happened in that moment and clicked for John Wesley 283 years ago. And he said this in his journal. He said it was about 8.45 p.m. And he wrote, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. John Wesley had in that moment an experience of new life and of salvation. Now, this wasn't the first time that John Wesley had thought about being a Christian. He grew up the son of a pastor. Uh, his mother helped to invent Sunday school for he and his brother and the neighborhood kids. He was all about Christian life. He was an ordained priest who had been a missionary to the Americas before this. But he was trying to find a deep personal emotional connection. And in that moment, something just clicked for him. His life of continued practice and faith that he had been leading up to that point kind of came together in that moment. And he would recount other significant moments of faith, encounters with the Holy Spirit and with the saving grace of Christ throughout his life. But this one, he counted as special. We might say in this moment, John Wesley had an experience of being born again. In our scripture passage today, we hear the story from Nicodemus, uh, the story of Nicodemus from the Gospel of John, where Jesus introduces this idea of being born again, or some translations would say born anew or born from above. But even as Jesus is explaining it to Nicodemus, Nicodemus doesn't seem to understand. And he got to ask Jesus directly. I think there's a lot of confusion about what it means to be born again. What is this connectedness to born again? What is this sense of salvation? Who is it available for? How do I get it and what is it like? Well, John Wesley is also helpful for us in this. He spent most of his life teaching about salvation through Jesus Christ. And he provides some helpful insights for us about this idea of what does it mean to be saved, to be born again. First of all, he says salvation is an act of God, not something that we can earn through duty or righteousness. And I think this is really important that we remember this. Salvation is an act of God, not something that we check off a bunch of boxes and we get. Being born again doesn't come from saying magic words. It doesn't come from being in church every Sunday. It doesn't come from the service that we do. Being born again comes from God. Wesley also says salvation is a free gift of God. It can't be purchased and it can't be earned through righteousness or activity. Now, a lot of us want to try to do the things that we think will earn us uh, or ex that we can exchange to God. If I do this, God, then you do this. And salvation doesn't work that way at all. As a matter of fact, God says, I'm going to give it to whoever I want to give it to, as often as I want to give it as an inexhaustible supply. It's not like currency. It's more like love. God's to give and to love whomever God wants. Salvation, Wesley also says, is available to everyone. In John 3.16, the passage from the verse from this passage that most of us know fairly well, if you've been around church for a while, the phrase is not, God so loved some people, or God so loved the church that he sent his only begotten son, or God so loved the righteous. It is, God so loved the world. Salvation is available to all people. Wesley also says salvation is an ongoing experience. It's not a one and done thing. 
It's not something you experience once, walk away from. It's not something that you say, at this point, I was saved and I'm all done. I don't have to ever think about God again. Instead, salvation is something that grows within us, something that we walk through in our lives and we encounter God again and again and again. In a lot of ways, for Wesley, becoming born again was something that happened each and every moment of the Christian life. As we were born anew and took the next step for us, in our faith. Uh, Salvation involves that ongoing and deepening discipleship. John Wesley gave some guidance for folks too. He said not everyone's going to experience this uh, sense or feeling or presence of God's rebirth and renewal right away. Instead, some people may have to practice it for a while before they experience it. And initially, people thought this was funny, uh, that the folks who were part of John Wesley's group had these practices that they engaged in on a regular basis, so much so that they made fun of them and called them, oh, those are those Methodists, the people who think that there's a method to get to salvation. Wesley thought, hey, this is awesome. You know, that is exactly true. We don't want it to be this mystical, mysterious, out there thing. We want it to be a practice that anyone can have access to. So yeah, follow the method. It won't earn you salvation, but it sets up the practices in your life that help you to experience it. Wesley also said that being born again was one part of how we experience a sense of salvation in Jesus Christ. It wasn't the whole story, but it was part of a collection of things that came all together as we were connecting with God. And he said it fit alongside uh, these four other ideas. There was a sense of adoption by God, that we became part of God's family, that we were no longer just individuals in the world, but became members together, brothers and sisters, children and parents to one another, a connectedness with God and with the other believers. He said that it was also connected to a sense of an assurance of salvation. And for Wesley, that was really this sense of assurance of forgiveness of sins. That for all of the people who are haunted by shame and regret, for things that they may have done or not done in their lives, Wesley said, these things don't matter to God anymore. uh, In this experience and connection with God, you can let go of the burden of shame, and step forward, being reborn, entering into a new life, freed. He also said that it came with a sense of power over sin, that connectedness with God helps us in that uh, action of salvation, in our response and feeling to experience that the things that trapped us and bound us, the patterns of life, the systems of the way that we have lived, our addictions, our brokenness, our bondage, all of those things are broken apart and cast aside. We are given power to confront what is not working in our lives. And finally, he said the other piece that people experience is a sense of love as a new motive for living. That this was a key part of what it meant to be born again, to uh, have our lives start over, was the sense that we were given a new purpose, a new direction, a new meaning, a new action, a new organizing principle, and that was love of God and love of neighbor. We no longer live for ourselves or for our own purposes, but we live in order to bless the world. Being born again is not simply a Christian code for agreeing to a series of ideas about God or Jesus. Being born again has nothing to do with accepting certain social or political or even religious ideas. Being born again is about being in a relationship with Jesus. It is about believing and trusting Jesus, not believing in ideas about Jesus. It is personal. It is individual. It has to do with who we know, not what we know. 
This is the amazing power about this connectedness, this idea of being saved by grace through Jesus Christ and our experience of being born again in that salvation. That it is a connectedness to God directly. Out when we were living on the East Coast, in order to get things done, you often had not to know about something, you had to know somebody. So it was common to say if you wanted your snow removed, if you wanted to get something done down at town hall, it didn't matter what you knew, it mattered who you knew. And it was important that you knew a guy, as they would say it on the East Coast, because that's how things got done. God has said, you are so important to me that every one of you knows a guy. Every one of you can know Jesus Christ. We are all welcomed into that journey. Now, I know for some folks, this sense of being born again is a difficult idea. For others of you, it may just be commonplace. But I want to invite everyone today into that sense of God's salvation. I want to invite you all to join in that connectedness with God through Jesus Christ. And I want to do that as we pray together. So let's pray for just a second. Jesus, healer of every soul, we invite you into friendship today with each and every one of us. No matter where we are in life and no matter what is happening around us, we invite you into that relationship. Lord, bring with us that sense that we are adopted into your family. That we are part of that great community, brothers and sisters, parents and children, who are gathered around your throne. Help us to receive an assurance that we are forgiven for our sins. Let go of the shame and guilt of our past and give us a new sense of power that we can confront all of the things in our lives that are keeping us from stepping forward in love and life and hope. Set us free that we might use your power of love in the world to transform our own lives, the lives of our families, our friends, our community, and our world with your grace and your forgiveness and your hope. Let us be born again this day. Once again, or for the very first time, so that this day we can step forward in new life, that we can step forward in love, that we can step forward in grace and hope. We ask this all, dear Lord and author of salvation, asking it to your glory and to the blessing of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Please join us in singing, sing a song. I want to sing a song for you, Lord. Lord, for you, I want to sing a song. And I want to lift my voice to heaven. Listen to the angels sing along. A song of your faithfulness, a song of your praise. I love your loving kindness. Lord, listen to me say, I 
My name is Cameo Mancy, and I would ask that you please prepare your minds, prepare your hearts to pray with me together. And then we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, for this day, for this opportunity to collectively and electronically come together and connect, please bless our fellowship. Please bless this time. Please, Lord, let this take the message, the song, the prayers, and carry them with us throughout this week. Lord, we have a lot of joys to celebrate. We have graduations and marriages and babies and, um, again, fellowship that's coming together. We have a holiday weekend that is very honorable and a very special, special time for friends and family to get together and remember those who have battled before us. We have a lot of health concerns, Lord. There's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of recovery and there is some that have a long way to go and there's some that are just getting started in their diagnosis. And we ask that you pray, especially hard for those that are struggling in that space. We surround them with caregivers and nurses and doctors that have the wisdom and the authority to see them through, keep their family collectively and supportively around them as well. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for all of those that are supporting a bigger cause than themselves. We pray for our government, our leaders, and our authorities. We pray for our policemen, our firemen, and our first responders. We pray for all of those, Lord, that are on the front lines, and especially today in honor of the vets who have gone before us. We pray for our military men and women. Lord, we ask that you just put your power of protection around them. We pray for peace and understanding. We pray for justice and the reasons that these wars are fought, Lord. Let it be clear. Let it be clear that you, you, Lord, are in the midst of that battle. Please allow enemies to put their arms down. And please allow love to prevail in all regards. And we certainly honor those, Lord, who have made that ultimate sacrifice. For we understand from your word that there is no greater love than a brother who will lay down his life. That sacrifice. We are reminded of that in our scripture today. That the Son of Man has come to do these things for us. And we are so small-minded, Lord, that we still today fail to see all those miraculous signs and miracles that you supply and provide for us. So as Nicodemus learned through his heart, let us be reminded of our baptism in water and in spirit. And more than anything else, Lord, let us remember you always in the forefront of our time, of our day, our relationship, our love, our outbound service, everything that we are, Lord, we want through you. We desire through you and see us through. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. And now we will close in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom and your power and your glory forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name and all of his people say, amen. Thank you. Generosity is one of those core spiritual practices that connects us to God and with one another through Jesus Christ. And I want to thank you so much for all the ways you are giving into Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and for your financial gifts. Your generosity makes the ministries happen with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. 
in our neighborhood and throughout the world. So thank you. You can continue to give your financial gifts using our online giving portal. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section and it's also available from our webpage. You can set up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office and we'd be happy to help you. And then of course you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We uh, love to be able to help you connect your faith into a life of giving and service. And I want to lift up some of the opportunities that are up, that are upcoming to do that with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We are so excited to be able to hold a COVID-19 vaccination clinic here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on Thursday, June 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. This is a joint effort of the Illinois Department of Public Health and the United Methodist Churches of Illinois, and we are going to need everyone's help to make this vaccination clinic a success. First of all, we're going to need you, everyone, to help recruit people to be vaccinated, yourself, folks in your family, friends, and neighbors, and we're going to need help spreading the word around our DAUMC neighborhood and registering people. We will need help with setup for the week of the clinic and, of course, help on the day of the clinic as well with hospitality and support. We need you to pray for this effort and for the safety and health of our community in combating COVID-19. Please let us know that you would like to help with this effort. You can use the link in the comment section or the one that's found in our e-newsletter as we're getting all of this effort together here in these next weeks. It is also time to register for Celebrating God's Creation Family Camp, our summer vacation Bible school for kids, family, and people of all ages. It is on for Monday, June 21st through Thursday, June 24th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. as an outdoor, fun, energetic, in-person experience with activities, music, and games. Please use the registration link that's found in our newsletter or just contact the church office for more information. And then today we are joining together with United Methodists throughout the world in the Peace with Justice special offering. We join our financial gifts together into an outpouring of love and support for ministries at home and around the world, such as Methodists spearheading a peace ministry, uniting Arizona border border communities, the Letting Girls Be Girls Health Education and Programming in Sierra Leone, and Economic Empowerment Program for Women in Canaan Nagar, India. You can give through our online giving portal, click on the special offerings menu and choose Peace with Justice, or you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please just put Peace with Justice in the memo line. You can learn more about this through our e-newsletter, which is the best and most up-to-date way to be able to connect in with all of the ways to grow and serve with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. So please share your email address with us using that contact form. We hope everyone will use that today. Please join us in singing Freely, Freely.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just hope that this whole experience has been a blessing for you, that it has been uplifting and empowering, and that you will continue to join with us in online worship or join with us for in-person worship, Sunday mornings for worship on the patio at 11 a.m. at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We love you. We want to continue to be able to connect with you, to walk with you in your life of faith. So please do use that contact form so that we can connect with you. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely, that Jesus Christ goes with you, that the Holy Spirit fills you and empowers you. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.